This is Day to Day with St. Joseph. It's a program by Father John Barry at Resurrection Catholic Parish, Burtonsville. There we are Monday. And it's also, for our diocese, uh, Chrism Day at 2 o'clock at St. Matthew's Cathedral. We're down there for the Chrism Mass. And today, well, Jesus has got a big starlight on him. Maybe I can put it on the top of his head if I uh, do this little trick here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about the Bethlehem experience. On Friday we talked about the Holy Land experience. Now we're going to talk about the Bethlehem experience. I was remarking how people like to try to find a way to experience the Holy Land or experience the life of the Bible. And uh, I, I think of one thing, National Geographic had an experience we could go into uh, uh, some holy places in, in Jerusalem. And you walk through and it was like a, a surround experience. It was, it was done in a fascinating way. I brought some prisoners from here to see it. Uh, I invited, invited you and we also visited the cathedral. Um, but that was quite a fascinating uh, time for us. Uh, in D.C., the, uh, the Bible Museum, I think, also tries to give people a chance to kind of uh, get some uh, connection with what happened in the Bible to your life today. And that museum does try uh, to do it. Uh, so the Bethlehem experience, what is it? Well, I think it's the experience that people want Bethlehem to happen to them. For some people have a different kind of a Christmas story. It's more secular and it's more interested in pleasures and good times. And uh, But, you know, Bethlehem experience is really meant to be our faith experiencing Jesus. So we have the Nativity Mass and we celebrate Mass and we call it Christmas. And actually every Mass of Christ, every Christ Mass, can be experience of Jesus in the now, in the present. And that really is the Bethlehem experience. And in a sense, the cradle uh, where Jesus lay, he's now asking our soul to cradle him, cradle's presence. He has designed our soul that he can live in there. That was the original design of humanity and we broke it. But the Lord's allowing it to get healed. And so the Bethlehem experience is that. Okay. Now, I mentioned once before Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Uh, and uh, I said that in Nazareth, uh, that I knew of a few churches up there. I think I might have mentioned like St. Anne's uh, that's there and uh, Holy Family, I think, the parish. Well, I did some more research because a lot of people go to Bethlehem. And they go there especially for Christmas. Did you know that? It's probably not so much a surprise, right? Well, I looked to see just what parishes were in Bethlehem. I was really surprised. There's Notre Dame of Bethlehem, a really cute church, and it has a school. Then there's St. Simon and Jude, really a beautiful church. Uh, there's Holy Ghost Church, another beautiful interior. And it's paired now with a church called Incarnation which is a combination of five parishes joined into one. <laughs> Bethlehem had a lot of ethnic Catholics in it one time. St. Cyril Methodius Parish was the Slovaks. St. John Chrysostom was the Hungarian. St. Stanislaus, you guessed it, was the Polish. Our Lady of Pompeii, yes, that was the Italian. These were all Bethlehem churches. And then there was a St. Joseph, okay, a Slovenian church. So there was a Slovene, there was a Saint Joseph in Bethlehem, but it's all merged into what they call Incarnation Parish. Clever, huh? Clever name of all the churches coming together. Allentown Diocese came up with that clever idea. Well, there's also Holy uh, Holy Infancy Parish with a church and school. Another clever name, isn't it, for Bethlehem? And then the uh, Protestants have a place called the Cathedral of the Nativity right there in Bethlehem. So it turns out that there's a lot of uh, Catholics in Bethlehem. That's good to know. 
It's kind of an old-fashioned place for it's a kind of an old-fashioned diocese from the Allentown priests that I've met. Um, a lot of ethnic background, but I don't know if things are changing. Um, but I know that the parishes have had to merge instead of being divided by ethnicity, and that's kind of a good thing. I remember in the Harrisburg diocese, they had a town um, outside of Harrisburg, Steelton, and they had like four parishes there. It was like Italian, Irish, Polish, and uh, Yugoslav, Croatian. And they decided they had to merge all four parishes into one, into the biggest one. Prince of Peace Parish. <laughs> yeah, Prince of Peace. I was there for a wedding, and a Mount St. Mary's uh, grad was the pastor there, I remember that. So, Bethlehem experience. Uh, so it's interesting if you go to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for Christmas, if you stay at the Hotel Bethlehem, you might have a pretty good time. Now you won't be having to stay out in the parking garage or a cave. This is one of the top historic hotels in the United States. On their website it says, world-class service, charming guest accommodations, 125 spacious rooms, the height of elegance. Hospitality Extraordinaire. <laughs> the hotel was built in 1741. If you go at Christmas, you'll see a 15-foot Christmas tree, 3,500 Christmas lights, 36 wreaths, six 7-foot toy soldiers, two life-size nutcrackers, and a gingerbread house made to look just like the historic hotel. Whoa. <laughs> so, something's going on in Bethlehem. And... They're uh, attracting a lot of people in. The only thing is I don't like that casino down the river, down the Lehigh River. Uh, wish that wasn't there, but uh, Bethlehem is a hopping place. Uh, but the real Bethlehem experience is getting in touch with the Lord Jesus, who is our Savior from Bethlehem, who is uh, can be experienced now in the present, in the now, a living reality, Sacrament, Jesus' is sacrament. But he is the one that was prophesied to come out of Bethlehem. And uh, and you, O Bethlehem, Epitah, who are a little one among the thousands, clans of Judah, out of thee shall come unto me, that is to be the ruler of Israel, whose coming forth is from the beginning, from days of eternity. Yeah. That sounds like a prophecy about Jesus, Micah 5, 2. And, and it happens right there near, right under the nose of King Herod in Jerusalem. Remember he did know when the Magi came? So Matthew chapter 2 is the great Bethlehem experience for the Magi. They come in and they adore, they fall prostrate and they adore him. And they see the Lord of Lords come as a babe. And they're amazed. Well, now we too have to have an amazement. One priest calls a uh, Eucharistic amazement, that which the Magi had seeing God in the flesh. We can see God. And we can have a Bethlehem experience. Um, and uh, Bethlehem is ours in the present. If we really understand sacrament and understand what we do as Catholics, that the Lord of Bethlehem is the Lord who is in our hearts and the head of the body of the church and who is the Lord of heaven.